Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, and welcome to the new section of MongoDB series. First and foremost, yes, I have been gone for a little bit while. Uh, I was busy in maintaining the website, too much of the work, server end, too much of the work. But again, let's uh, go back onto our MongoDB series. I was enjoying thoroughly teaching this series and you guys uh, loved it so much, so thank you so much for that. Now let's continue our talk about MongoDB. Now, so far, we have discussed a lot about MongoDB, installation process on variety of systems, Macs and Windows. Also, we have learned a little bit about how we can add some databases and make some entries. We haven't touched any hi-fi part of the MongoDB, just the basic stuff, like how we can enter different type of data, data types into the MongoDB, uh, like strings, numbers, objects, and array. And these are the most common ones which you'll be encountering uh, as the initial days of MongoDB. But there is a little bit more discussion I want to have with you on this MongoDB. So first and foremost, we're gonna create some of the theoretical discussion about it. And then we're gonna move forward into the shell itself to have a little bit discussion about it. So let's discuss. And uh, the topic for discussion for this video is MongoDB schema. And definitely we're gonna talk about relations as well in this section only. So MongoDB. Straightforwardly, I want to mention the highest quality of the MongoDB, the biggest selling point of MongoDB, which is MongoDB by default doesn't enforce any kind of schema on you. And that's actually the true part. It never ever enforce any schema on you. So there is always a big selling point or choosing point when you are choosing a database, something like MySQL versus MongoDB. Now the big concern and big difference that you'll read everywhere in single every single article, which of course is true as well, is MySQL gives you a very rigid schema, means uh, you cannot go and make a mess around with the schema. If some column needs to be filled up, it definitely needs to be filled up. If the column name is always should be name, it is always going to be the name. That's kind of rigidness you get in MongoDB. And in the MySQL, in the MongoDB, the opposite is true. MongoDB doesn't give you any uh, kind of rigidness. It's totally about freedom. It doesn't enforce you any schema. And some of the beginners might be asking, what is this a schema actually? Now schema is nothing more, just a fancy word of kind of arrangement. You can consider this as an arrangement. And a schema is necessary because it keeps all of your data in check. And while making a query for looking up for any kind of data into the database, it makes the process less costly and much more efficient. To give you another example of how the schema actually looks like, schema is nothing more than just a structure. Like for example, I al always expect that the name of the student should come up in the string and then not in the numbers. That is also a schema. And that's the kind of a structure. You might have seen a structure all around you. For example, in the libraries, if imagine you walk into the library, there is no section like bio, math, physics, or programming. Uh, every book is gonna be just lying around. It is going to be so hard to find out what the book you are looking up for. Even further, some people like to just book their sections, like this is bio section, this is math section, and try to just arrange the books alpha, uh, uh, alphabetically again. So the more structure that you're gonna have, the easy it is to find the data. Okay, so this brings us to the question, if MongoDB is so schema-less, then how we actually arrange all of these things? why anybody on this planet is using the MongoDB. Now, the reason why I'm saying it's schema-less, a lot of people assume that there is no structure. No, my friend, this is totally a wrong notion. MongoDB, although by default doesn't enforce you any schema, but all the developers who use MongoDB try to enforce some level of schema and some level of rigidness. The advantage is that in case you need one more field to be entered later on for just one particular product, you definitely can go ahead and do that. In the MySQL world, you have to just rewrite your entire database architecture. In MongoDB, you can just get away with that. So that kind of flexibility is awesome, but always there are rules which are enforced by developer to maintain that kind of schema. So you enjoy both world, uh, rigidness in the schema as well as some kind of flexibility in case you need that. Okay, now that is clear up. Uh, there is one more thing we need to talk about. So we have been talking this MongoDB schema list, but we haven't seen actually in action what actually does it mean. In order to define that, we need to go into our database, try to create some database and stuff and actually give you exact point that why this one is schema, this one is not schema. Okay, so what we need to do is fire up our terminal. And there we go, this is my terminal. I'm gonna hit Control L to just get a clear. And I'm gonna say Mongo. And this is going to open up a shell for me. There we go. And I'm gonna just move it a little bit here so that it's clearly visible to us. Okay. 
First and foremost, show dbs. We have learned all these commands in the past, so in case you're watching it as a new beginner, uh, just head into the playlist first and, you know, schema. Okay, and obviously I would like to get rid of these couple of uh, databases, so I'm gonna go for uh, old students, and I would like to drop this database, so I'm gonna simply say um, old or in fact, let's just keep this database. Probably we might need it a little bit later. So just let it have. I will give it another thought that whether I'm gonna need it in the upcoming videos or not, and then we can think about deleting them. So uh, in the meantime, let's use another database. So we're gonna say courses, okay? Just use the courses. Forget the bow command. Uh, we are still thinking on that. Okay, so use courses. Let's just say I have a website. Obviously I do have. Uh, and we are creating a schema for all the courses that we are gonna be putting up inside. So let's hit enter. Now we are switched onto the database. We have created it on the fly, DB courses, okay? Now I want to insert something in it. Right now, obviously the database is totally empty, so we want to add something into it. So we're gonna say DB dot, and I want to make an entry of a course, individual course inside it. So obviously in order to do so, we have learned the command that we can use the insert one, which is a function, of course and it expects you to pass on a pair of uh, curly braces to pass on all the data. Okay, so how does a course should look like? A course should always have a name. So there we go, we are gonna put up a name. Uh, there we go, I'm gonna call this as Java Bootcamp. Okay, then obviously a course should have a price as well, so we're gonna go for price. And this price is going to be, let's just say I want to go for $10, okay? Um, Really, really simple database. So we have defined that every course is going to have a name and a price, that's it. That's all I'm caring, caring about. So I hit enter, it's acknowledged as true. We do have now entry in the database. Now let's go back and try to make one more entry to define that uh, schema. So next time when I came up, I forgot that I did this work like one month ago and we're gonna go for data uh, db.course.insert1 and later on, I decide that I'm gonna add more field into this. So instead of a name, I called it as title. And of course, that's also a valid thing. And this time I'm creating a course for Android P. And uh, then I decided that price is going to be uh, 10.2, $10 and two cents. And not only that, I decided that my course should have some FAQs as well, so that users should be cleared up upfront that what kind of data or what kind of course things I'm expecting inside it. And this can be an object. We have learned it in the past as well, just like previous video. And we can have some FAQs. So my question one is going to have an answer. So I'm gonna say answer one, <laughs> really, really. Uh, and uh, we further can have like more FAQs. Let's just have one more. So we're gonna have Q2, and that is going to be colon, and then a quotes. And we are gonna write answer two, and that's it. I guess it's going a little bit out. So there we go, this is what I've written. And I'm gonna hit enter, and there we go. So this is the two values I'm having. So if I want to just find all of this, so I'm gonna say uh, db dot course and how we can find all of this. I would like to give it a small pause here and would like to mention, go ahead and find all the values in the database. Can you do it for me? Okay, I hope everybody can do it. So we're gonna say uh, dot uh, find and inside this find, we are gonna pass on a parameter, oops, like that. And then we are gonna uh, find based on title, uh, which is going to be Android P. So let's hit enter, and there we go. So we can see that inside this, we do have uh, all the values here, which are coming up like an object and all of that. Uh, we can actually use a command pretty to just prettyfy that. There we go, so this is looking much better. So we, we can see that easily that we have two kind of courses inside our database and we are going like title is there, price is there. Obviously it just fulfills the criteria. Name is there, the price is there and we are having some additional information. Now here comes the messy part. Obviously we want some kind of protection uh, e either using through uh, some of the testing frameworks or either through some of our self uh, objects 
from the web application that these things should not be allowed. Like if I'm calling anything course as a name, it should always be called as name throughout the structure. If I'm calling this as price and naming the price somewhere as 10 and somewhere as 10.2, it is a nightmare. It should be called everywhere as 10.0. Uh, because that actually makes sense. But liberty is something that we have got in the FAQ section that later on we defined it, defined that, you know what, this course should also have a FAQ, but my other free course actually don't need an FAQ. So there I can use the liberty of MongoDB to add additional information whenever I require it. So there we go. You have understood what is the schema. Schema is the structure, how you actually get it. But there are certain more things into it. For example, we have a student database and we have a course database as well. Now every student is taking a course and there are some details about this course as well. So how we can link up these things? These things are actually uh, can be covered up easily into the relations part. We have a variety of relations, one to one, one to many, and we're going to talk a whole lot about it. So there we go. Let's keep the video short and sweet. So we're going to just end this video up here. In the next video, we're going to talk more about how these relations work as well, as well as some more fun stuff in the database as well. I hope you're enjoying this series. In case you are enjoying it, please, please do share it with your friends. I would love to make a big community of the people who love programming and uh, can learn more stuff from this channel. That's it for this video. Hit that subscribe and I'm going to catch you up in the next video.